Good thing I'm not in Minnesota. How about that intro this week? <laughs> Pretty awesome. The other intro I was sent this week, it was a little violent. They said it was staged and I said I'd throw it in there if I could find a way to make it funny. So here's my attempt. Mason and Timmy are getting in a fight. He freaking told the whole school that I wore his pink freaking underwear when I even, I didn't even do that. He freaking told the whole school that I wore his pink freaking underwear when I even, I didn't even do that. Like seriously, stop! What are you gonna do about it? Busty! Flawless victory. Haste! This last week was my rest week. I love rest week! I did two vault days, I spent a whole day writing training, and there was Halloween in there. I should have done a little bit more, but I kind of needed a mental break. For whatever reason, the, mon the monotony of training and doing the same thing over and over and over again without competing, it kind of wears you out. And then trying to find a way to support yourself to make sure this happens kind of wore me out too. Thank goodness it was my rest week because I was feeling worn out and I was kind of in a weird mood all week. I'm very sciencey, so I'm like, Oh man, my serotonin levels are low. Did I eat something different? Maybe I should train more to bring those serotonin levels up. What brings my serotonin levels up? How do you bring your serotonin levels down? Did I do anything to bring my serotonin levels down? Oh my god, am I not getting enough sleep? Because that affects serotonin too. That's just what I do, but <laughs> I'm feeling pretty good now. But uh, So the whole week's just been kind of a um, hard week to get through, but sometimes that happens with a lot of training. So Tuesday, I vaulted. Caroline decided to let's let's try four or less get you back a little bit quicker this year since everything's looking good and your turns a lot better than it was last year at this time I went back to four or less with the idea of pushing grip I just really wanted to get my grip up because having like a 15 6 to 15 8 grip jumping 18 feet is good But I'm pretty close to probably maxing out my grip so if I can grip higher I could potentially jump higher That's the idea. Um, so I found halfway through the practice that if I hit the takeoff a little bit harder with my arms taller and not be in such a hurry to move them, then it creates kind of a bigger stretch and brings more energy moving the pole forward more. And it worked. Um, we had a bar like 14.6, I cleared that a bunch of times with the idea of just kind of getting the movements down 15 feet. And made that a couple times too. It was good. It was the highest grip I ever had. I think I got up to 14.5 or 14.6. Got it to work. Overall, it was a super good day. The quote of the day came from a U of M vaulter. I don't think I can say his name because of NCAA rules, which NCAA stands for Nazis and Communists Against Athletes. <laughs> was plants late and I said hey man the plant should never be fashionably late it should be early and get the party ready to get going and he goes that's right because if your plants fashionably late you're gonna be fashionably hurt <laughs> uh Thursday I tested with my mom my mom I decided let's have her test and see what happens testing Testing. first time ever again for feeling kind of like I don't even want to go test but I surprised myself my standing long jump I PR two inches my overhead shot I PR by seven inches a standing triple jump, I PR'd by 8 inches. Uh, 30 meters from a 3 point start, um, I was just 4 one-hundredths off. A 30 meter fly was 2 one-hundredths faster than I've ever done, and my vertical was an inch higher than it's ever done. So all my jumping stuff is off the charts. The running stuff is even better too, and I haven't even touched the treadmill yet. I'm kind of amazed. I'm supposed to be old and not be getting any better, but I'm getting better. So this is pretty sweet. And it was fun because my mom was there and I like training with my mom. Whoa! <laughs> we'll give her 42. We'll give her two centimeters. 
Jump, stop, wait. Jump, stop, wait. What'd you do? 16 what? 16 feet. And what did I do? 16 meters, yeah! <laughs> good, 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 good. What do, I, what do I have to keep in mind? Keep in mind that I already moved all of those. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Going for the gusto. Going for the gusto. <laughs> Good trick, huh? I got it. I got it. <laughs> it's the most ridiculous testing session I've ever had. Oh! Not even close. <laughs> Here's my impression of mom at that last one. Almost as good as me. Did you PR and everything you did today? Absolutely. Why? Because I'm the best. Because it's your first day. <laughs> <laughs> I like my answer better. It's my new shirt. It's the KMR shirt, did it, right? That's right. Made me PR last time and you're PR on this time. It's fun. <laughs> she's, she acts like a little kid because she's never done it before. So um, overall, testing went great. Friday. I did another vault day. On Tuesday to Friday, I was uh, racking my brain trying to figure out why the pole felt small, but I was landing short. And I wasn't holding high enough to make the pole be too small. And I couldn't figure it out. So I had it in my head that if the pole's small, I should be landing deep. Because my grip's not too high to make me land short. Instead of moving up poles, which is what me and Caroline usually do, Caroline just said, Let's try and land deep. Try and land deep and be a little more patient. It was one of those aha moments. You can't really see it. It's not super noticeable. But when I feel like a pole's getting small, I pull on it really quick and start my turn. But instead, I just pulled my left arm in and left my right arm straight. It worked so much better and the pole got really small and even the next pole got really small. It was so good and I cleared like 14.6 a bunch of times. Fifteen was like cake a few times, and then fifteen six cleared that a couple times. Then fifteen nine and cleared that a couple times. And then when the bar got up to sixteen feet. I've already jumped for an hour and a half and my legs were getting kind of tired and I was blown through the pole. I needed the next pole, <laughs> but it was the end of practice so I didn't go up to it yet. Patience is key. Don't be in a hurry to get off the top of the pole. If you do things right, you should enjoy the ride. And so I was enjoying the ride probably for the first time in my entire career. It seems like there's a whole world of possibilities now. So I'm pretty excited to see what I can do when I get back to like six to even nine. And I'm playing with the idea of maybe doing a 10 left approach this year. So we'll see what happens. Two good days of jumping. And then Thursday, obviously, was Halloween. I was still kind of in a weird mood on Thursday. Carrie really wanted to carve pumpkin. It's a little PG-13, so if there's a bunch of little kids, you might want to turn away for a second. Pumpkin carving was easy this year. It's a girl. I'll show ya. <laughs> oh, the girl part. <laughs> My pumpkin's gross. One more time. You. <laughs> it didn't really piss her off. It just made her laugh. And then that's when everything started to go better for the week. I was watching the news on the Wednesday before Halloween. There was a question that they asked everyone to go post on their Facebook. And, and what is the appropriate age? to stop trick-or-treating. Some people are saying ninth grade, once you're in high school, boom, no more trick-or-treating. There was some smart-ass old man on there who just goes, I think 60 is the appropriate age. You can just tell he's retired and has nothing better to do than mess with the people on the news. <laughs> the overwhelming response. If you have the balls to go dress up as an adult, going door to door and trick-or-treat, then yes, I'm going to give you candy. So that's what me and Carrie decided to do. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't a little nervous to go trick-or-treating at 27 years old. <laughs> <laughs> Rejection. 
That was one, right? <laughs> so as I was dressed up, I decided to not just go trick or treat. I thought it'd be funny if I did a little dance. Trick or treat. Trick or treat. Trick or treat. Oh my god, that's awesome. Trick or treat. <laughs> We went out with the idea that we would get rejected and the rejections from trick-or-treating would be funnier than actually getting candy. We didn't get rejected one time. And it seemed to make everybody's day and that helped us get a whole ton of candy. <laughs> trick-or-treat! <laughs> oh my gosh, hello! <laughs> she has the best you. reaction oh, yet. <laughs> trick-or-treat. <laughs> I'll do it again. Oh, you guys can see it. You know what, this is... Trick or treat! <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, a oh. Thank you! Oh my god, do you see their wedding photo? There's a porn stash. Merry Christmas! You mean Halloween. You get candy just for that, okay? Thanks, Your shoe's untied. My shoe's untied? Oh man, he didn't do it. You're not a good master of deception. No, I'm not. How old are you? Next time. I don't care. I'm 27. <laughs> I went trick or treating once when I was 18. So. Yes. <laughs> so. yeah, we're no trying problem. to, we're trying to see it. how many times we can be rejected. <laughs> you have to do the dance. Trick or treat. <laughs> <laughs> you get a trick. <laughs> trick or treat. <laughs> That's a good reaction. You're a box. Thanks, man. <laughs> Unfortunately. I go. I dude. Thank you. Oh, pro, it's awesome. is an identity crisis. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> See you guys later. You know what? This has to be okay. the most hilarious thing I've ever <laughs> seen. Thank you. Yes. Have a happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. <laughs> the last house we went to was John Townsend's house. <laughs> What the heck? Who the heck are you? And ever since we were little kids, when we were like seven and eight years old, we went trick-or-treating at his house. So I was like, we gotta go to his house. It's kind of like my tradition. Gotta go to John Townsend's house. And every single year, he gave us candy with a nail in it. <laughs> we're a screw. We have a special <laughs> candy bar for you. <laughs> That's why we're Take your head. Head in. Take This year was no different. And while we were there, his daughter, Brooke, and a bunch of the neighbor kids were there and they were freaking out and they wrote me um, a story based on my costume and I told them I'd put it in the vlog so here it is. You should actually put this on the video vlog. I'll put it on there. Do you guys watch those things sometimes? Yeah, I always watch them. Okay, well you'll be in the next one, deal? Yeah, and me! Deal. And me! <laughs> okay. Sean was trick-or-treating as a horse tiger. No, it says tiger. You're right, let me start over. Sean was trick-or-treating as a horse tiger. 2G. Brought his vlog video <laughs> camera. And Brooke, Hannah, Hanny. I'm joking. Hanny got to use it by Brooke and Hanny and Bob. <laughs> did you have fun? I did. Were you nervous right away? Yes. When did you stop being nervous? Never. <laughs> <laughs> We did pretty good. Do you want this? There's a nail in it. <laughs> <laughs> He's the assistant fire chief of Hastings. I could have swallowed it for gal's sakes. <laughs> what was your first reaction when you saw us? We were like, that's hilarious. And you were like, that's not nice. <laughs> not edible. <laughs> So the moral of the story is, you can be as old as you want and still go trick-or-treating as long as you have the balls. I mean, as long as your heart is in it. Go trick-or-treat next year, I dare you. It was one of the most fun trick-or-treating experiences I've ever had in my entire life. Do it. Like always, please subscribe and tell others to subscribe because that helps me a lot. And YouTube will like me more if I have more subscribers. Follow me on Twitter at Sean Danger Hoot. Because Danger is my middle name. Uh, yeah, middle name.
Um, if you want me to write you some training, go check out the description. All the information is there. If you would like to send me workout gear, because you have a sweet company, or a track club, or you're just a cool guy who wants me to wear your trousers. Don't send me your dirty underwear, please. That is also in the description. I put my address down there below, so you can send me whatever you want. And you don't have to message me anymore, unless you really want to, because I like talking to you guys. Or if you just want to send me, like, a letter or something. I like reading those too, and I will put it in the vlog. So, that's about it. Everything's in the description. Check out the description, because the description's really important. Do it right now! Until next week, Team Hoot. Started off this week getting my butt kicked by a treadmill workout. We tied some bands to my ankles and I was running against it. And it was the hardest thing I've ever done in my entire life. It almost killed me.